In this uh, video, we'll talk about eye color inheritance in Drosophila. So, the color of eye is present on sex chromosome, that is X chromosome, and how does that get inherited? That is what we are talking about. So, this is eye color inheritance in Drosophila. Drosophila that is commonly known as fruit fly and the reason why it is known as fruit fly is because it is found hovering around ripened fruits. The full scientific name of this Drosophila is Drosophila melanogaster. So melanogaster. This is the Drosophila that we are talking of or the fruit fly that we are talking of. And the scientists who worked on this Drosophila and this eye color inheritance in Drosophila was Morgan. Now, let us first discuss few things about this Drosophila and then we'll come to the exactly the way this inheritance takes place. Normally, fruit flies are small flies which are found around this ripened fruits and the reason why Morgan picked these uh, fruit flies were few important reasons. First, it has four pairs of chromosomes and these four pairs of chromosomes, uh, we normally number them like, so if we just draw these chromosomes, these chromosomes can be drawn like this or normally they are drawn in this manner. And let us just number them. So this is chromosome number one, two, three, and four. So this is how we normally draw the four pair of chromosomes. The first pair is of sex chromosomes. So this is, if it is a female, it is going to be X and X, and that is how we are going to draw them. And if it is a male, it will have X and Y, and Y chromosome, is drawn like one X and the Y goes like this. So this is the first one which is the sex chromosome and the remaining three are the autosomes. Fruit fly completes its life cycle in very short period of time. About two weeks is the life cycle completed. Third important thing Every time fruit flies reproduce, the next generation is in big number. That means they, they lay a large number of eggs, so we get a bigger number in progeny. So the progeny, that is the offsprings that they produce are in large numbers. And as we say that they are found around fruits, ripened fruits, to grow them in a lab, we just need pulp of a fruit and that can provide the nourishment to these fruit flies. So they feed on fruits. So we have to just provide them with pulp of fruits and that uh, will be more than enough for their growth and survival or reproduction. Plus, as we are reproducing them in the lab, the space required for getting these large number of progeny is also less. One more important feature is that the sexes are distinct. That means they can be easily distinguished from each other. So male and female can be easily distinct. So they look different, can be easily distinguished. The female is bigger as compared to male. And the eye color, normal eye color in Drosophila is red. So they have red eye color. Now, when Morgan was working with these fruit flies or Drosophila, he found one male, white eyed. So that was a mutant. There was some mutation which resulted into formation of a white eyed male. And as we are talking about this eye color inheritance. So let us start with this white eyed male. So this is our starting point. Now, 
In case of Drosophila, whenever we talk of inheritance, we take two slight differences or variations from the normal pattern. As we have already discussed in the beginning of uh, this chapter of genetics that a particular trait is represented by two alleles. One is dominant, other is recessive. Both can be dominant, both can be recessive. But the dominant allele is represented by a capital alphabet and normally the alphabet that we choose comes from the name. For example, when we were talking about height and we said tall is dominant, so for showing dominant we picked capital T and for showing the recessive that is dwarf, we picked the same alphabet in its smaller form or recessive form. So in case of drosophila as we are talking about eye color, the dominant eye color is red. So we should have picked red for or R capital R for red. This would have been the normal. So this would have represented red and small r would have represented white. But as this white is the mutant variety and this is our main focus, there is an exception that we start with W. So capital W will represent red and small w will represent white. So this is one exception that we were talking about. So instead of R taken, which represents the dominant eye color, we are going with the recessive eye color, the alphabet that is W. But dominant will be represented by capital and recessive will be represented by small or lowercase alphabet. And the other thing that we talk of, which is slightly different from other type or other inheritances which we represent is Instead of simply writing X and Y chromosomes, we normally prefer drawing the shape. That means X will be written like this or shown like this, X chromosome, and Y would be shown like this. This helps us because we are talking of two things simultaneously. We are talking of sex chromosomes and the gene for eye color on this sex chromosome. So, these are two changes which we are going to follow in case of uh, this drosophila and eye color in drosophila that is we will go with W that is for white but capital will represent the dominant that is red eye color and lowercase will represent the white and instead of simply writing X and Y we are going to draw the chromosome so there is no possibility of error and this will be clear once we start taking these crosses. So our cross is with the white-eyed, white-eyed male, which is the mutant that more than found. And if, and we know that the gene for eye color is located on X chromosome. So if we are talking of the male, the chromosomes are X and Y. And because the male was white-eyed, that means it must be having the small w or the gene for y. So here we will write small w and there is no gene on the y chromosome. This mutant white-eyed male is crossed with a normal red-eyed female. Red-eyed female means we are talking of two x chromosomes and as we are talking of normal we will start with Pure, that means dominant for both. So this female has capital W and capital W on both the X chromosomes. Now the male produces two types of gametes. Let us plot the punit square and place these gametes here. The male produces two types of gametes. The X with small w and Y without any gene on it. And the female produces capital W containing eggs. Now, when the fertilization takes place here, we will get a capital W coming from, okay, let us write down the gametes. These are the gametes from the female and these are the gametes from the male. So, when this capital W containing X chromosome is fertilized by small W containing Y chromosome or a male gamete, then it is two X's together. And we will see what eye color they are going to represent. Here it's going to be capital W containing X and Y 
here also it's going to be capital W and small w containing excess and here capital W and Y containing chromosomes. Now, let us talk about the sex of these uh, organisms or individuals and the eye color. Here there are two X chromosomes, so this is going to be a female and as there is capital W, the eye color is going to be red because we know W is what we are using for red and small w is what we are using for white. Now coming to this one, it has one X and one Y, so it is going to be a male and only capital W is there, so red eye color. The third one here, one capital W, so red eye and both X's, so it is a female with red eye color and this is going to be male with red eye color as there is a capital W. So in F1 or in this first generation, we get all individuals having red eye color. So there are two females, sorry, this is going to be a male. So two females and two males. So there are two females and two males. These two are female, both having X and X. These are two males having XY, XY. And all four have red eye color. So this goes as per the law of dominance. That dominant character expresses itself in the F1 or the first generation. Now let us talk about the gene. We said that the mutant had a white-eyed gene that is recessive. So from this male, it has gone to the female. This is what we need to track a little bit. Now, when these members are selfed, we will get the F2. So let us talk about what is going to happen in F2. So this is what is F1. We have two females, red-eyed and two males red-eyed. Same. All four, they are red-eyed. Now in F2, we are taking say one this male and this female. So here, the female has two X chromosomes, one with capital W, other with small. So it is red-eyed female and we are going to cross it with the male of the same generation, that is capital W containing X and Y. So this is red eye male. Now in F2, what, let us see what ratio are we going to get. So this is our unit square and the gametes produced by the female are the eggs having capital W and small and the gametes produced by the male on this side is one W containing X, capital W, and other is Y. When fertilization takes place, it's going to be capital W, capital W here, capital W, small w in this case, capital W, and a Y, and small w containing X, and a Y. Now again, let us write down the sex of these individuals and the eye color. This is going to be a female because there are two X chromosomes. This is also going to be a female having two X chromosomes and color. So these two here, they are females and color is going to be with capital W red with capital W red. These two are males. This male is having one capital W, so eye color is going to be red. This male is having small w, the recessive one. The gene which we were tracking is one here and one here. So this male is going to be white-eyed. Now, let us see how this gene has traveled to, through these generations. From parent generation, it was present in the male. So let us say in parent generation in male. So parent generation, male. Then from parent generation, it came to the females of F1 generation, that is F1. So from parent male to F1, female. 
and from this F1 female, it was expressed again in F2 male. So, in F2 male. In other words, we can say that this gene has been inherited from F, oh sorry, parent male to F2 male through F1 female. Again, what we are trying to say is, how has this gene getting inherited? It is going from the parent generation male to F2 male through F1 female. If we translate it in relation to human beings, it is from grandfather to grandson through daughter. That means if this is a grandfather, then through his daughter, he is going to pass on that gene to his grandson or in case of drosophila or in general if we have to say it is from parent generation male to F2 male through F1 female. Such inheritances are known as crisscross inheritance. So when we talk of such kind of inheritance, it is known as crisscross inheritance. And crisscross inheritance can be of two types again. First is parent generation male. This is the one which we have shown here. Parent generation male to F1 female to F2 male. This is the one which we have shown here. Here it is male parent generation to F2 male through the female. It is known as digynic. And if second type, second type would be if we say it is from parent generation female to F2 female through F1 male, then that inheritance, it is again crisscross, but that would be called die and brick. So these are two types of crisscross inheritances. Let us quickly go over it to understand the inheritance of eye color in Drosophila. The gene for eye color is located on X chromosome. The dominant eye color is red. Recessive is white. Morgan found one mutant white-eyed male in the whole progeny and he then crossed in this manner and that's how we know that this is the type of inheritance it shows. Male was white-eyed. So on the X chromosome, there is small w, that is the recessive gene, crossed with the normal red-eyed female. In F1, we found all offsprings having red eyes, two males and two females. But the gene was from parent generation male inherited to F1 females only. As you can say, these two females have the small w's, males do not have it. Now on selfing of F1, in F2, that recessive gene from this female has gone to F2 male. That means the inheritance is from parent generation male to F2 male through F1 female. And the second possibility is from parent female to F2 female through F1 male. Both are called crisscross inheritances. But there are two more terms, digynic and diandric, depending upon how is it getting inherited. So this is what we mean by eye color inheritance in Drosophila, which was explained by Morgan.